Now this is just going to be a very simple investigation into the motion of a trolley, but I want to use it to introduce some of the ideas and ways that we actually carry out experiments in physics. So what I have is just a standard school trolley. I have it on the ramp here, and this end is just very slightly raised, and when I let it go, it accelerates, and what we can do is we can work out the average speed of this trolley. Now the average speed is going to be the total distance, which is from this red line to this red line, divided by the time. Now to work out the distance, I've actually measured it before, and I set it up that from this part here to the end here is equal to 0 0.600 metres. Now we can measure to the nearest millimetre, but I'm giving all of my units in standard SI units. So length in metres, time in seconds. So we know the distance is 0 0.600 of a metre. We can record the time using a school uh, stopwatch. So start, stop, reset. You know, you'll have been using these all the time. Now, to be honest, this ramp is actually quite short. If you're in the school lab, then hopefully you've got access to an even bigger ramp because the longer it is, the less error there's going to be with human error when we've got this time. You might notice if this is traveling really quickly, there's gonna be a bit of human error when I start the stopwatch and a bit of human error when I end it as well. And we can actually minimize that if you've got more space with a longer ramp. Now to adjust the height, um, I'm just gonna be using bits of Lego to actually prop up uh, this end of the ramp. And then I'm going to be recording the height of the start line here. Now to do that, I'm gonna have my ruler. And I'm gonna be making sure that when I actually take my reading, I actually keep my eyes level. And that means the reading that we take is as accurate as possible. So for this first reading, I've got a height of eight millimeters. And again, we're gonna convert that into meters. So that's 0 0.8008 of a meter. So we've got a starting height, we've got a distance, we've got the trolley, so we can now start to take some data. So for this first one, I'm gonna make sure that the front of the cart is in line with the, the front of the piece of red over here, and I'm gonna stop it as soon as it gets to this point here. Now, let's see what the time is. So that time, I got a time of two seconds, 0.25. Okay, so not very long at all. But is that actually the time it took? Was this, were there some mistake in my data there? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do repeats. I'm gonna do each experiment three times, and that means it allows me to spot any anomalous data. If it is anomalous, I can discard it and do it again. And then with those bits of data, I can then take an average mean value for the time. And if we know the distance traveled and the time taken, we can work out the average speed. Now in this investigation here, certain things are staying the same. It's gonna be traveling the same distance each time, we're using the same surface, so we've got the same amount of friction, and those are our control variables. The thing that I'm changing is the height of the ramp. This is the independent variable, it's the thing that we're in control of changing. So we're gonna change the height of the ramp, and then our dependent variable is going to be the speed of the trolley. And by convention, we maybe have six different values uh, for the independent variable, so I'm gonna go for six different heights. And then at the end of this, we can plot it on a graph to look at the link between the height of the ramp and the average speed of the trolley. So for my second value, I got a value of 2.12, which is pretty close to my first one. And the third set of data I got 2.25 again, just like the first one. So I've got three bits of data for when we have the ramp at that height. I'm now gonna add another bit of Lego on each side. So the height is 16 millimeters that time. So we can now take some data for this height. So I had a time of 1.85, so less than before because it's going to be traveling quicker. Uh, 1.81 and 1.75. So I'm just going to keep repeating the process.
Now we can clearly see there's a link that when we have a higher starting height, we have a higher average speed. But by plotting on a graph, we can really see the relationship between these two different quantities. So this is all the data I took for different heights of ramp. Now, what I can look at now is working at the average time and it's going to be the mean value. And that's just equal to all of these values added up and divided by three. And looking through my data set here, I can't see any that don't fit the pattern. So I don't think I have any anomalous data. So I'm now gonna work out the averages. And when I do that, I'm just gonna give all of my answers to two decimal places, just like my raw data over here. And now I'm going to be using the equation that says the speed is equal to distance divided by the time. Now the distance each time was equal to 0 0.600 meters. And then the time is whatever time we have in this column over here. So for the first one, it's just going to be equal to 0 0.6 divided by 2.21, which gives me a value of 0 0.271 meters per second. So I'm going to give all of my data here to three significant figures, like my distance here and my time. So now we have some data. We've got our independent variable, the height of the ramp, and our dependent variable, the average speed. So I'm going to plot this with the height of the ramp on the x-axis along the bottom and the average speed on the y-axis up the side. So I've labelled my axes, including with the units. And what I can now do is actually take the data that we had over here and just start plotting it in. And to do this, I'm going to be using a pencil in case I make any mistakes. So that's the data plotted. And in actual fact, if we had a height of zero, then the actual speed would be zero as well. So that means with this data here, we should really have something where this is the first part of our line of best fit. Now we can see, if I put the ruler next to it, um, it's definitely not a straight line. In actual fact, it's more of a curve. So what I'm now gonna have a go at doing is putting in a curved line of best fit that goes as close as I can to most of these points. Now I'm not going to be doing dot to dot, I'm just gonna be looking at the general trend and the shape of this data. So I think something like that looks appropriate. Again, with your lines of best fit, you don't want it to be really, really heavy, and you don't want to be sort of shading it in with some sort of hairy line like that. So this is the kind of thing we're after. And what it really shows here, I suppose, is that the average speed is not directly proportional to the height of the ramp, because we don't have a straight line that goes through the origin. In actual fact, we might be able to think about how this relates to some of the physics that we've learned. Maybe the fact that at the start, the trolley had energy stored in the gravitational potential store, which is MGH, and over time this is transferred to the kinetic store, which is a half mv squared. Now basically these two things here, what we have here, the average speed is the v term that we have over here, and the height of the ramp is h. And provided all of this energy is transferred from one place to another, we've got the same mass of trolley, a half is just a constant, and so is the gravitational field strength, we can actually then say the height is actually proportional to v squared. And that's why we don't actually have a straight line, because we have this squared term over here. So um, the reason we do experiments is to investigate the link between different things. We can then actually show that graphically on a graph, and then this then maybe allows us to actually understand some of the underlying physics in a little bit more detail. So that was just a very brief introduction to how to do experiments in GCSE physics.